Hi, this is Manos Prilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute. And this is case 99 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case that illustrates what should not be done during retrograde CTO interventions. This was actually my first retrograde case done uh, almost a decade ago. And the value today is to demonstrate the things that we did not know then, but we do know now, and the things that should and should not be done to have the best outcomes with retrograde intervention. The patient came with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction and some non-specific EKG changes. Diagnostic angiography showed um, patent right coronary artery that was supplying the LAD through two epicardial collaterals. There was an occlusion of the mid LAD at the takeoff of a large first diagonal branch and there was no significant disease into the circumflex branch. Therefore, we had a LAD CTO with a blunt proximal cap at the side of bifurcation. We could not determine the length, and that is the lesson back then we did not routinely do dual injections, which we now know is the standard. So we did, could not estimate the length of the occlusion, but appeared to be relatively short. And we did have a good quality distal vessel filling by epicardial collaterals. So what we did in this case is to try to wire through the LAD CTO. We used a seven friends guide, which is acceptable even today. And then we tried to cross with equipment available at the time, which was workhorse wires, the Miracle T and the Confianza Pro 12, advanced either alone or through the Venture Microcatheter, trying to point them towards what we thought was the proximal cap. Of course, today, if we had a dual injection, we'd be much more accurate about where the wires should be directed. Unfortunately, this was unsuccessful. We then decided to insert a second guide catheter, but unfortunately, we soon found out that the patient had a CTO of his left common iliac artery. So we decided to leave this for now. Of course, now we would just immediately obtain a radial axis. We then tried to go retrograde through this epicardial collateral. And we soon found out many things. The first one is that the microcatheter we used was too short. We used a 135 centimeter long transit catheter, and we now know that we should use long microcatheters, that is 150 centimeters, and also use short guide catheters so that um, there's more room for the microcatheter and the wires to be advanced. Despite that, we were able to advance the wire to the middle AD, and then we did find a 150 centimeter prowler microcatheter, which is a neurovascular catheter, which could be advanced all the way to the middle AD, but not further than this point. Our initial plan was to get a retrograde balloon and then balloon the middle AD and then use a, another wire to wire the lesion undergrade. However, we soon found out that uh, we could not advance a balloon all the way to the lesion. Therefore, there are multiple lessons already. One is that dual injection is key for CTO intervention. Second, that short guide catheters and long micro catheters should be used when the retrograde approach is being planned. We tried then, we, used, we obtained right radial access finally, and used a 3.5 XP guide to engage the left main. We then tried to do what today we know is called the just marker, use the retrograde wire that had actually interestingly crossed into the distal true lumen into the left main, we tried to use this as a marker to advance an undergrade wire or try a two to true crossing. Unfortunately, we were unable to advance an undergrade wire. And therefore, we decided to snare the retrograde wire, which was a 300 centimeter whisper, into the undergrade guide catheter. And that was achieved using an end snare. Of course, at the time, we didn't know what we know now, which is that you don't pull the snare to externalize the wire, but instead you push the guide wire through the undergrade guide. So it was not surprised that the wire was extremely hard to pull back. There was constant tension and movement of the guides that had to be adjusted constantly. And eventually the snare came off the wire, which was not yet exited from the undergrade guide catheter. We tried to be creative. We used the front runner uh, catheter to be able to catch and pull back the guide wire, but eventually we're unable to pull it all the way through the TUI. And moreover, the tip broke, so 
that's another reason why the retrograde wires should not be pulled, but should be pushed instead from the undergrade chi catheter. Eventually, what we did, and uh, the necessity is the mother of creativity, we ended up removing completely the undergrade chi catheter, and that allowed us to get access to the externalized wire. And then, over this wire that did not have a guide catheter, we did advance a 1.5 millimeter balloon and did inflations into the LED at where we thought was going to be the proximal cap and the occlusion. But of course, they did not solve the problem of delivering a stent into the mid LED. And then we devised this technique called guide parallel to wire, in which we actually advanced a 5 French guide catheter next to the retrograde wire through the same 6 French radial guide catheter and then engage the left main through um, the uh, this guide catheter xp 3.5 um, uh, guide catheter so now we have an undergrade guide catheter that is next to the retrograde externalized guide wire and fortunately now we were able to advance a workhorse wire because we had ballooned the LED, the wire easily crossed from the proximal LED through the occlusion to the mid LED. And then we had to remove the retrograde gear before delivering stand, which was extremely challenging for many reasons. One is we did not have a regular externalization wire like the RG3 or the R350 we have today, but also we could not advance the microcatheter all the way to the undergrade chi catheter because it was not long enough. So again, lessons that we learned the hard way is that the best way to remove a retrograde guide wire is to advance the microcatheter all the way to the undergrade guide and then pull the wire, making sure that the guides are disengaged from the ostia to avoid any ostia injury slowly. And uh, this is much easier now, of course, with the newer wires such as the RG3 and R350. We were fortunately able to finally re uh, remove the wire and then we ballooned and placed the stand and we did achieve a recanalization of the LAD CTO. We ended up publishing, publishing this as the guide parallel to wire technique. But I think the value of this case today is to demonstrate to us what uh, should not be done during the retrograde CTO intervention. Number one, dual injections should be used essentially in all cases unless there's absolutely no contralateral collaterals. Short guide catheters should be used for the retrograde approach as well as long microcatheters. The retrograde guide wires should not be pulled, but instead should be pushed. And then if we do all that, we would not need to create new techniques like the guide parallel and wire because the cases can be completed much more quicker as well as safer. Thank you.